I first started with this feeling that I wanted to do something. My daughter helped me make a sign that said, we are listening. And underneath it, it said, unlearn, speak out, and take action. And it was really my commitment to what I wanted to do in response to my opening up towards what I could do in my community and what I could do in our, my country in terms of helping in, in equity, inclusion, um, anti-racism, and my own learning. And so I've had the honor, really, of shepherding an idea. And the idea is becoming an anti-racism community. And we have called that the Anti-Racism Collective. Collective being intentional, that we are a non-colonized way of beginning to explore together. What does it mean to change, to unlearn, to speak out, and to take action towards becoming an anti-racist community? You know, I always wanted to consider myself a very non-racist person, um, but of course we all have biases. And through this really understanding those biases that, that I have and being aware of them and checking them. But I think the biggest impact is I really learned the difference between non-racist and anti-racist. And I was like, okay, um, I have nothing else to do because it's COVID, <laughs> so let me just go. And I was super nervous and just assumed everybody else knew each other already. And it was just, it was amazing. And just to be with this group of people that were all concerned about what was happening in the world and what we had seen. I grew up in Tyler, Texas, which is east of Dallas, about a hundred miles. And it's just a little East Texas town. <laughs> My high school was called um, Robert E. Lee High School and we were the rebels and we had a cannon and a rebel guard and a confederate flag that ran down the field in, in, while the fans all sang Dixie and so I really um, I was in my element, I thought. I can remember being in the grocery store with my mom and seeing that there were two water fountains and one said colored on it. And it just uh, made me wonder, what would that other water taste like if I used the colored water? When I first started this, I really believed like, if we did these things, we could achieve the ultimate goal of being anti-racist, showing up in a different way. And I think in many ways that was my naive whiteness, the idea that it was a problem to be solved and I could solve it. What I've learned through this time is that we have a, his a history that is deep and systemic and that racism invades all parts of our lives. And my job as a white person is to be aware of the ways I can show up as a business owner, as a community member, as a grandparent, to help promote I, the ideals of being equal, just, and connected in ways that really help us grow as a community. I, I've felt like an outsider since I've moved here from Texas because um, here people talk about um, culture, well, being a Scandinavian or being, are you Norwegian or Swedish? And I'm English through and through, you know, and so I, 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 had, I talked a little bit different and, you know, there were things about me that made me not fit in. And um, so when we, I started talking about race in a group of Minnesotans, I, I wanted to shake everybody and say, come on, wake up, don't you see your bias, you know? And yet, they didn't. <laughs> I had to learn to be patient. <laughs> and this work, I think, is one of those that's kind of, um, if we get, if we, if we learn to understand this and get through it, and um, it'll help um, with our common kind of humanity. You know, there's a lot of positive things that have happened in Edina um, around, you know, there's been some horrible situations with students at the high school. I think the high school responded to that and created community conversations. I think that's very important. Um, you know, there's no community 
that's racist free, unfortunately. And so I think, you know, having an organization like this where we can try to educate ourselves about racism and then create forums for dialogue, because I think that's so important. Um, I think this is a forever journey. I don't think that there's really an end point. None of us knew each other before we started this, this work, and so it's been a gift to have met and to have worked with everybody. Um, so I did want to put that out there. Um, as far as where do I think we are, I think that we are making baby steps. Um, I think that there's a lot more that, that needs to be done. And um, one of the things that Terry and I was surprised that she didn't mention this, is that she talks about that we need to be the pebble in the shoe. So that just reminding people, like, we're not done. This is still important. This is something that needs to be worked on. Because of our network and because of our um, friendships, we're able to kind of come together quickly and um, mobilize for events and let people know um, that things are important. My background, I spent uh, many years as a lobbyist. Um, I was in healthcare, um, and so I really enjoy the policy side of this. And so also creating awareness, sending, inf sending this information out to groups so that they can be aware of what's going on and really having a, a vantage point where we can see if there's places that we can step in and try to influence the policy aspect. Justice and race don't seem to be um, together in, in people's minds. And it's quite honestly very difficult to do, more difficult to me to do that work uh, than in a, in a more ecumenical uh, setting because people really get their hackles up if you move too fast, if you use the wrong words. I'm heartened by the amount of people who are interested in having the conversation. Um, I'm heartened by the people who, um, who are willing to kind of be in that, in that conversation. So um, I think we are learning as a community, and I think we're a community that values that. One of the things that I'm aware of is that many of us wish that, like, we could just check off racism, particularly those of us in white skin, like, oh yeah, we, we've solved that. And there is such a long history, and it is so baked in how we engage in the world, that this is ongoing work. And I think that's what's become really clear to me, is how do I stay committed, and how do we create new opportunities for our community to stay involved? That this isn't a one and done, this is a way of coming at it again and again and again, and hopefully in interesting and provocative ways.